In this video, we're going to take a look at the seventh JWT lab on Portswigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called JWT Authentication Bypass via Algorithm Confusion. A couple of things to mention before we get started. This is the first expert lab on JWT attacks, so I would recommend going back through the beginner and intermediate labs before this one. Also, if you have no idea what JWTs are or JWT attacks, go back to the first video we made, which provided an introduction into these concepts. If you've watched the previous videos, you'll probably also know that we go through three solutions in each video. We solve the challenge with a Python script, then with Burp Suite, and then with the JWT tool. However, I wasn't able to get the Python script working for this one. I did spend quite a bit of time on it, so if anybody does get it working with the Python script and wants to send it through to me so I can see where I went wrong, that would be appreciated. Anyway, I'm going to start by reading through the text that comes with the lab, but if you've already read this in your own time or you're aware of the background information, then feel free to jump to the chapter where we go into the practical lab. Algorithm confusion attacks, also known as key confusion attacks, occur when an attacker is able to force the server to verify the signature of a JSON web token using a different algorithm than is intended by the website developers. If this case isn't handled properly, it may enable attackers to forge valid JWTs containing arbitrary values without needing to know the server's secret signing key. JWTs can be signed using a range of different algorithms. Some of these, such as HS256, use a symmetric key. This means that the server uses a single key to both sign and verify the token. Clearly, this needs to be kept secret, just like a password. Other algorithms, such as RS256, use an asymmetric key pair. This consists of a private key, which the server uses to sign the token, and a mathematically related public key that can be used to verify the signature. As the name suggests, the private key must be kept secret, but the public key is often shared so that anybody can verify the signature of tokens issued by the server. Algorithm confusion vulnerabilities typically arise due to a flawed implementation of JWT libraries. Although the actual verification process differs depending on the algorithm used, many libraries provide a single, algorithm-agnostic method for verifying signatures. These methods rely on the alg parameter in the token's header to determine the type of verification that they should perform. The following pseudocode shows a simplified example of what the declaration for this generic verify method might look like in a JWT library. And we can see quite a simple function here. It will just grab the algorithm from the token header, and then if that equals RS256, it will use that provided key as an RSA public key. If it equals HS256, it will use the provided key as a HMAC secret key. Problems arise when the website developers who subsequently use this method assume it will only handle JWTs signed with an asymmetric algorithm like RS-256. Due to this flawed assumption, they may always pass a fixed public key to the method as follows. In this case, if the server receives a token signed using a symmetric algorithm like HS-256, the library's generic verify method will treat the public key as a HMAC secret. This means that an attacker could sign the token using HS-256 and the public key, and the server will use the same public key to verify the signature. Note that the public key used to sign the token must be absolutely identical to the public key stored on the server. This includes being the same format and preserving any non-printing characters like new lines. In practice, you may need to experiment with different formatting for this attack to work. So how do we perform an algorithm confusion attack? First, we need to obtain the server's public key. Next, we need to convert it to a suitable format. And then we need to craft a malicious JWT with a modified payload and the algorithm set to HS256. Finally, we sign the token with HS256 using the public key as the secret. So let's go through the steps in a bit more detail. First was obtaining the server's public key, and it says here that servers can expose their public key through a standard endpoint. So for example, jwks.json, or the same but in a dot well-known folder. These may be stored in arrays of JWKs called keys, and as you can see in the example, we have a JWK set which has multiple keys. Even if the key isn't exposed publicly, you may be able to extract it from a pair of existing JWTs. Step 2 is convert the public key to a suitable format. Although the server may expose the public key in JWK format, when verifying the signature of a token, it will use its own copy of the key from a local file system or a database. This may be stored in a different format. In order for the attack to work, the version of the key that you use to sign the JBT must be identical to the server's local copy. In addition to being the same format, every single byte must match, including non-printing characters. For the purpose of this example, let's assume we need a key in x.509 pem format, 
and you can convert JWK to a PEM using the JWT editor extension in Burp. So to do that, we open the extension and we go to JWT editor keys. We create a new RSA key, pasting in the JWK that we got from the server. We select the PEM radio and copy the resulting key. And then we can go and base64 encoder and then go and create a new symmetric key. In there, we generate a new key and then we just replace the K parameter with the base64 encoded key that we just copied. All right, so it sounds relatively straightforward. We'll have a look at that process in a minute. Once we've done this, we'll need to modify our JWT. So as usual, we'll change the user from Wiener to administrator, but we also need to make sure we change the alg header to be HS256 instead of RS256. And then finally, we'll sign the token using the HS256 algorithm with the RSA public key as the secret. Okay, so with the theory stuff out of the way, let's jump into the practical lab. The description says, this lab uses a JWT-based mechanism of handling sessions. It uses a robust RSA key pair to sign and verify tokens. However, due to implementation flaws, this mechanism is vulnerable to algorithm confusion attacks. To solve the lab, first obtain the server's public key. This is exposed via a standard endpoint. Use this key to sign a modified session token that gives you access to the admin panel, and then delete the user Carlos. So we've been given some credentials as usual to connect with. Let's go and access the lab. And first things first, we'll log into our account so that we get the JWT. So we log in as Wiener with the password Peter. And then whenever we hit F12, we'll be able to access our cookie. You can see here we've got our session cookie, which is the JWT. We also though need to get the JWKs. So let's go and check that standard endpoint it was talking about. It's either gonna be this one or maybe with that folder well known, but this one looks okay. So you can see that we've got the JWKs.json and right here is the key. So you could have multiple keys here, but this is the only one we need to worry about. So first of all, let's go over to Burp Suite and let me go to the JWT editor tab. And then it was new RSA key. We paste in the JWK. There's all the information nicely formatted and then we can click PEM. And now we can take a copy of this key. I'll just click OK, and then let's go to the decoder. We're going to convert this to base64. So encode as base64. We take a copy of that, and then we can go back to JWT editor. We create a new symmetric key, just give it a random key, and then we're going to update the K parameter with that base64 encoded PEM. All right, looking good so far. What I'm going to do is go back to just the home page of this. Just so we've just got a standard request, which I'm going to go to send to the repeater. So let me right click this one, send to the repeater or control and R. That goes through to the repeater. And now we can actually access our JWT tab. I'm just going to maximize it so you can see it. Here we go. We've got two extensions. And what I would have done here is go here and try to edit the algorithm and edit the name, but you can't actually do it with the JSON web token extension as far as I can work out. So I'm going to do it with the JSON web tokens one. I'm going to change that to HS256 and I'm going to change the user to administrator. And then let's go back to the JSON web token one. And it's all updated as you can see. And now I'm going to sign it with HS256 and we want to select that key that we just set up. So let's go to OK. Let's click send. And we were looking for an admin endpoint which we don't have i think i have just used the wrong key to sign that so let me undo this send let's go back here we'll set that to administrator hs256 back to json web token we'll do that again but this time sign it with the correct key okay send and this time you see we've got an admin panel we can just go back to repeater, change this to admin and send. Now we can access the admin panel and then we can delete the user Carlos. So we could just do this directly, but actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to undo this again and let's try and use the JWT tool. As I said, I couldn't get it working with the script. It was a bit weird because throughout the script, I was printing out the different values like the PEM keys and the base64 encoded values. Everything was looking okay, but it just never resulted in the correct token. So. Let's go back to our JWT editor and then right click on the second key that we created, the symmetric key, copy public key to PEM. 
And then I'm just going to create here a key.pem and we'll paste that in. Make sure the new lines and stuff are the same. And then let's grab our JWT and we will just send it through to the JWT tool to begin with. So this brings up all the information. We know that we need to change the sub and we need to change the algorithm. Let's do that again and do dash H to get the help options and go and have a look at our exploits. And one of them is key confusion and it tells us to specify a public key with dash PK. All right, so let's go back down here. Let us do the same thing again, but let's do dash X and then K is the confusion attack. Dash PK, because we need to supply the key and that is key.pem. And then we also want to inject some claims. So I'm going to say inject the dash PC. So the payload claim is sub and then the payload value is administrator. You don't actually need to do the HS256 header because that's going to do this for us. That's part of the attack. So if we just run through that, it'll give us this token. And then hopefully if we take a copy of this and go back to the browser, let's go and see what our cookie is. Let's change this, refresh the page. And now we've got the admin panel and we can just go ahead and delete Carlos. Anyway, that is how we can solve this lab with both the JWT editor extension in Burp Suite and the JWT tool. Reminder, if you get this solved with a Python script, do let me know in the YouTube comments or on Twitter or something, because I would be interested to find out where I went wrong. I did spend a few hours trying to get it working. Apart from that, in terms of avoiding this vulnerability, as was mentioned in the Port Swigger documentation, if you are verifying a JWT token, you should really specify the algorithm. Don't leave it to the user to specify what algorithm that they want to use. So in the next video, we'll go to the final JWT lab, which is also an expert lab and part of the confusion algorithm section. For now, let me recommend you to sign up to the integrity platform, because if you're interested in finding vulnerabilities with JSON web tokens, you might as well get some money for it as well. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.